On this week's episode of Work Trends, we're looking ahead at Unleash America. This is a pretty cool event that explores the bridge between work and technology. Stay tuned for my conversation with China Gorman. Welcome to the Work Trends podcast from Talent Culture. I'm your host, Megan M. Biro. Every week, we interview interesting people who are reimagining work. And join us on Twitter every Wednesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern, using the hashtag WorkTrends. I am so excited. I have one of my BFFs here today with me, Miss China Gorman, who is the managing director of Unleash America. She is a board member of the HR Certification Institute and a former CEO of Great Place to Work Institute. And yes, it it continues. And a former COO of SHRM. Welcome to Work Trends China. Yay! Thanks! It's so good to be with you again. I know. We're never too far from one another. That's the nice part. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere in the world, though, I, I remember some of our trips, you know, where we ended up at the same place because of industry events in London and other places. And actually, it probably seems like we're together more outside the U.S. than inside the U.S. I know. I mean, actually, um, Work Trends audience, China and I have probably known each other. I'm scared to say, I think for about ten, nine, ten years yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, it's been probably. a while. Yeah, yeah. So listen, where are you today? Speaking of all this global travel. I am in my home office in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's beautiful, light breeze, blue sky, light breeze. It's going to be 85 today. Ooh, I'm so jealous. Yeah. Well, it's it's mid-April as we record this. So it'll be a lot warmer when your audience hears. (laughs) Well, it's just going to keep getting hotter and hotter. Yeah, yeah. So listen, I'm excited to see you. I mean, we're now weeks away from Unleash America, which is in your hometown of Las Vegas later this month. And the theme is the bridge between work and technology. Talk to us about some of the big ideas you're excited to explore on this front. Well, you know, when we when we think globally, privacy, data privacy, is looming large with the onset of GDPR impacting organizations that have employees all over the world and different standards of what's private, what's not, what's available, what's not. Employee and individual data privacy, I think, is going to is a top issue and is going to continue to be a top issue. And that's one of the one of the areas we're going to explore at Unleash America on the 14th and 15th of May in Las Vegas. That's because we all have devices and we're all collaborating, right? Well, and and the advent of blockchain where people can where individuals can own their data in a new kind of way and share it in a new kind of way is going to impact this whole employee data privacy arena in a really interesting way. And I'm aware of a number of organizations that are starting up to help organizations, nonprofits, for profits, to help individuals own their data, collect it um, so that they can disseminate it in, in new kinds of ways as they're applying for jobs or applying for certification or applying for you know schools or educational experiences. This is really going to have a huge impact on how employers find out about potential employees, how they interact with current employees and what they can share and what they can't. And ultimately, what we need to wrestle to the ground is who owns employee data. Oh, and wrestle to the ground we are going to do because you're absolutely right. And it's not cut and dry. This is not black and white. This is very fuzzy. This is very great. And I think we are going to be a number of months and years away from actually, well, I'll use the word solving this question, but at least we're working on it, right? Well, we are. And um, like many new technological breakthroughs, it's going to take us a while to figure it out and we're going to make mistakes along the way. And and so I I think I think we all have to just sort of sort of recognize that employers and employees um that it's not going to be perfect. You know, there is no perfect answer and whatever we start with is not going to be the end point. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, listen, tell me about all the speakers. I know you and the team have put a lot of work into curating the voices, the personas, the people, that the humans, right, that are going to be at this conference. I know I'm thrilled. I'm going to be moderating a panel there yeah, with a bunch of people, which that. I'm excited. But tell us more about it, just the event itself and some of the speakers. Well, you know, um, Unleash is a new kind of professional development experience designed for very senior level folks in HR, but in other in other um, functions as well. Uh, we call it Unleash because our focus is on unleashing the power of your people. And so while our roots are in HR technology, and when you talk to employers of all sizes, HR technology really does help employers know who they have, know what skills they've got, know how to communicate with them, track their progress, deliver services. HR technology is a big piece now of the employee experience. And in many ways, it's trying to be the glue, part of the glue that, that binds the employee and, and the employer. But unleashing the power of your people is about more than just HR technology. That's our roots. But we're, we're looking, we're looking at the big issues. We're looking around the corners and over the horizon so that senior leaders who are making decisions about how do we unleash the power of our people? And that's not just HR. That's technology. That's finance. That's marketing. That's technology. All of those functions, those senior level people are involved with unleashing the power of the people that work in their organization or are, have some kind of work relationship with their organization. And so we, we're bringing controversial in some cases, thought provoking, cutting edge speakers from academia, thought leaders in different disciplines, uh, surprising speakers, and then mostly, you know, practitioners, CHROs, CTOs, heads of employer brand, heads of talent acquisition, who are all talking, thinking, experimenting, um, and implementing really, really 21st century approaches to binding the people who work for them with whatever kind of relationship that is, whether that's employee or something else, but bind them more closely together so that they are in alignment and that the relationship will, will persist. So we have some great speakers this year. Esther Perel, um, she's a therapist and a best-selling author, and she talks about how do you be a real person in the real world? She's very inspirational and comes at things um, from a very personal perspective. So as a therapist, right? Yeah. Um, she works with organizations a lot about the the employer-employee relationship and how does that dynamic work and, and how do you make workplaces friendly for human mm -hmm. beings, right? Um, Peter, Hens Peter Henson, co-founder and partner at Next Work, is a leading future thinker about work. Just a really great a great speaker who brings really interesting, interesting insights. And we have John Boudreau, management professor at USC. Um, and then we have a very controversial speaker, our last keynote speaker, because really I, we were just talking about data privacy and who owns what and how does that work. We've got Edward Snowden being Whoa. beamed in from Moscow. Yeah. And so he's going to He's going to talk more sort of big picture about data privacy, sort of his experience, not so much politically, but so how do we know who owns what? How do we work so that people can control what they need to control in terms of data? Obviously, he made some decisions that were very controversial. And in fact, most people believe illegal around data privacy. And so uh, that's going to be a whole fresh different take that should sort of spur the thinking and create some interesting juices. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> for for our our <laughs> attendees to marinate in, um, as marinate they, as and, they, and there might even be and there might even be some fistfights. You never know. Well, um, I'm hoping not this. <laughs> you know, I really. But it would be hard to get in a fistfight with him because he's going to be in Moscow. Be See? Him again. So, yeah. I, so we, we're, we're beaming him in, Scotty. Yeah. yeah that's that, awesome. Exactly. And that's we've good got stuff. people like Catherine Minshew, who's the founder and CEO of The Muse. Sue Marks, the CEO and founder of Cielo. We've got Patty Fletcher, 
formerly um, super, super high level HR person in the HR tech space, now um, author and speaker. We've got Mike Etling, we've got David Green, we've got Catherine Jones, Lars Schmidt, I mean, plus analysts. Um, but I was just going through what we've got posted on the website. And right now we have 75 speakers posted and 34 of them are women. And if you look at that website, yay, you see, yay. Um, you will see a pretty diverse group of speakers. um, And I would position more diverse than any other sort of event, live event in our space. I like that you're mixing it up with controversial because that's the reality of what we're all experiencing. Come on, you know, like, let's keep it real. I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, And we have as business leaders who are making decisions about how do we select people? How do we get them on board? How do we keep them? How do we develop them? How do we deploy them? So the most senior people need to know the other things that are going on in related spaces, right? And so things like Edward Snowden, which is not an employee data issue at all, but it was a data theft issue. And so what happens as a result of that could very well impact what's happening as employees join companies with data from other employers, leave company with data. But just think also about the background checking business. Now, full disclosure, I'm on the corporate board of a background checking company, but think about what things like GDPR, blockchain ownership of your own data, and Edward Snowden, put those in a blender and think, now what does this mean for the background checking business? Right. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're having we're going to have some fascinating conversations. The other thing I would say about Unleash is um, this is about bringing to senior decision makers nuggets, inspiration, questions that you might not know the answer to. So that over two days you come away with new ways of thinking, new questions to ask that you might never have asked before. So here are areas where new things are happening that I need to continue to learn about and be invested from a mental perspective. And so to do that, the people that we have speak, except for the big headliners, they speak for 25 or or, or 30 minutes. These aren't, you know, death by PowerPoint presentations. These are significant business leaders, thought leaders, academic leaders, practitioners, entrepreneurs, bringing the most interesting, the most impactful, and the most cutting edge questions, some with answers, but more with with background, um, so that you get lots and lots of data points, lots and lots of different perspectives, from the from the speakers, right? From the from the content piece. And then when you go to the expo and you see all the startups alongside the vendors who, you know, you would expect to see the SAP success factors, the IBMs, the ultimates, the sum totals, the CLOs, the smart recruiters, the LinkedIn's. When you go out and you see all of those who, you know, Almost all of those were startups, you know, sort of at one point and not too far in the distant past. And you see some of these fascinating, fascinating startups who are competing, you know, to be the startup of the year at the show. But one of the differences of the Unleash live event is the focus on really supporting startups in the broader, I'm I'm not even going to call it HR tech, I'm going to call it people effectiveness tech, right? Organizations and people effectiveness tech. China, you just dropped a new phrase for us. That's kind of sexy. I like it. You just made that up, didn't you? I was just going to say that. I did. I did. So listen, I want to do some quick fire Q&A with you. You and I have been around this space long enough to be dangerous. You and I have thrown around a lot of buzzwords and big themes about the future of work in the last decade, okay? So I'm going to, you and I are going to play a little game with each other. You're going to tell me, I'm going to just name a name or name a a, a phrase, and you're going to tell me how the conversation is changing around that theme. AI and robotics. As it relates to people effectiveness in organizations, I think the jury is out. But I would say that the sub function that is making the most inroads on actually having useful 
impactful AI is the talent acquisition space by Why? by leaps and bounds um, because they're they are man they're they're just a whole like you you look at little uh, at startups like Pocket Recruiter that are driving human process timeout. Uh, of the recruiting process that are increasing the number of qualified candidates by a huge factor so that you can get from posting a job description to actual interviews in a very short period of time, driving tons of process costs out and increasing the effectiveness of hire. And as you're doing that, the system is learning what's working for your organization so that the next search is going to be even faster even and with even better results. So that's just one example. But they abound in the talent acquisition space. And so I think they're going to lead the rest of HR in terms of the effective use of AI. And we don't want to be afraid of these technologies, everyone out there. You work trends listeners. Remember, it's about keeping you more human at the end of this process. When you purchase a piece of technology, it's not going to replace you as a human. And I think that's an important theme that we're also going to see at the event. Yeah, we, we absolutely are. The humanity of our workforce is actually HR technology, AI inside HR technology are, are letting us be have more substantial and wider ranging human relationships with our colleagues. Um, well, I should say with our with our organization members, whether they are full time employees, part time employees, contractors, uh, gig workers, uh, customers, owners, suppliers, you know, that's just seven, right? Different different kinds of groups of human beings that we interact with in our organizations. And so to the degree that AI enhanced technology lets us focus more on the human relationship rather than the tactical process relationship between people, that's where we're headed. Employee experience. She so, took a she took a sigh, everyone. She took yeah. a moment. So to me, that's the essence of HR. Right. And it should an HR should be that all day long, all the time. And because we are bogged down in legalities, governmental regulations at the local, county, state, national level, I think in, in many organizations, big and small, long term and startup, that HR frequently has been reduced to you know, administration cops and not people who are engaged in creating an employee experience that will um, increase quality, that will increase the quality of the employee experience, and that will lengthen the relationship between the employer and the employee, regardless of what, what category they're in. And I think in their heart of hearts, that's the business HR wants to be in. And, and they're sidetracked into time cards and local regulations and what's Congress doing now or what's the EU doing now or what, what's being mandated that we, you know. And so as we move forward with technology, without technology, I really think the strength of organizations if you is in the relationship between the employer, and so that comes down to individual managers, right? And the people they're engaged with who are doing work, whatever category that is, whether it's employee or gig worker or part-timer or temp or whatever. Is employee engagement going anywhere in this discussion? You know, the latest Gallup data says that we're getting better um, for, for the first time in a really, really long time. Not much better, not much better, but a little better. There's a tiny little improvement of a uh, trend improvement but still the vast majority vast <laughs> more than 60 percent of employees are not engaged or are actively disengaged right so the opportunity there is huge to improve engagement but more than that the yeah, opportunity to increase everything you measure that means success for an organization whether it's profitability whether it's turnover whether it's innovation whether uh, Anything you measure, when employees are engaged, if you want it to go up, it'll go up. And if you want it to go down, it'll go down. I mean, it's just that simple. And the data is 
very clear. But if 60%, more than 60% of our employees are either not engaged or actively disengaged, the other way to say that is if only 30% of our employees are engaged, holy moly, we're, the bottom line is we're just leaving money on the table, period. I love it. I love that it's we get down to business with China Gorman today because that's really, I mean, look, right. It's not this warm and fuzzy all the time. It's business. It's driving the future and you have to have an ROI on humans. That's the way work is. That's the reality. And that's how, and that's all of what, you know, that's kind of the bottom line of, of Unleash, whether you come to um, Vegas in the US or you go to London in the UK or this fall you go to Paris in France, right? That's what Unleash is all about. HR Tech, talk to us about those two words right now. I think that's yesterday's nomenclature. I, I think what we're talking about is organizational effectiveness. I think what we're talking about is re the relationship between people and organizations working together to become more effective. And technology certainly can help to do that. It can also screw it up big time. But if you do it right, and if you select the right partners, absolutely it can. But I think HR tech is is limiting, it's siloed, it speaks of barriers, it I, I just I think that's that's kind of yesterday's language. Makes a lot of sense to me. I like where that's going and we're gonna continue to unfold that over the next months ahead for sure. Talk to us about vendors we should be watching. Who's really doing things in a innovative, cutting edge way, in your opinion? So, you know, we could talk about big companies, we can talk about, you know, smaller startups. Video My Job from Australia is a great little example of super easy to use um, video technology for messaging, for recruiting, for for um, every <laughs> anything that needs to be done in an organization, <laughs> you know, the right little video clip, whether you're whether you're videoing employees doing it themselves on a on a really simple, really I've seen it, I've used a really super simple app about <laughs> why I came to work for the ABC Tech Company and why you should consider it, or a message from the CEO about our results last month and go yay you team mm -hmm. or anything in between, right? Video My Job is one of those one of those great examples on the on the larger side. CLO, one of the I think it actually is the largest independent RPO recruitment process outsourcing firm in the world, founded by Sue Marks, really changing the game in terms of how you do high volume recruitment with that human touch. It's the marriage of the human touch and the AI and the technology. They're doing things in an exquisitely effective way. And so they'll be there and, and it'll be um, actually Sue is going to Sue Marks is going to be on a really on a really interesting panel. There's another little startup that's going to be here called SIP. Oh, it's yes. Like, right. It, yeah. It's the most, it's the most brilliant. Uh, it's like LinkedIn meets your employee directory so that people at the top of the organization know who they've got, what skills they have, what projects they've worked on in this organization and their previous organizations, right, right on their mobile app. And it's a, it's just an incredibly useful advice, uh, a piece of, a piece of, piece of software. What's interesting to me about that is that it's a, it's an organization wide application, but the biggest users are the people at the top. It's extraordinary. So it, so I guess what that means is <laughs> it works. And it works really, really well. So they'll they'll be there in the startup zone as well. But then, you know, but then we've got, you know, LinkedIn's gonna be there, SAP Success Factors, IBM, Some Total, Ultimate, App Learn, Smart Recruit. I mean, you know, we've got Yeah, we've got, we got options. Of That's the good news, everyone. We've got small, we've got medium, and we've got large. Listen, you have been really busy planning these conferences. What's been surprising to you about the process? And what's it like to be in your shoes doing a conference of this size? Yeah, well, so, he, so um, Unleash is headquartered in Budapest, Hungary. The CEO and founder is an Irish guy who lives in Budapest, Hungary. And the team in Budapest is this amazing 
international group of people who are focused on bringing these world-class events. And so, you know, you go and visit with them or they come to the, you know, they come to Vegas and it's, it's like being at the UN. They're smart. They speak, they each speak a hundred languages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it makes me yeah. feel so, so inadequate. Right. Um, so the biggest challenge is the time zone difference for me because it's nine hours different. <laughs> so, I'm on the phone at five a lot in the morning. <laughs> You're um, up early. But, but it's a sensibility of how do we bring the freshest, most thought provoking and useful and yes, maybe controversial topics and speakers to the London market, to the Paris market, to the US market in Vegas. And so we're constantly pushing the edge of the air. Of, of the envelope. Like, why don't we see if we could get Edward Snowden? No, mm -hmm. yeah. that might be really <laughs> too controversial. Well, let's ask some people. Let's let's kind of, let's socialize and see what we see. And, and I, I'm going to guess we might have lost two or three attendees. There you go. That's your answer. Yeah. But for the most part, people are like, well, that's an unusual choice. I might not have made that choice. But I'm going to be there and I'm going to I'll be I'll be fascinated to listen. And so we'll know at the end <laughs> whether, whether we push the edge too far. But so far, we're we're thinking it's pretty, pretty interesting. But I would dare say that from a um, from a keynote perspective, we don't have the usual suspects. Right. And, and we tend to not go. We don't go for TV. We don't go to TV and movie stars and, you know, that kind of thing, because at the end of the day, we're really trying to help organizations and people work better together. And so TV stars are interesting and they drive ticket sales, but do they, but do they really impact how organizations and people work together better? Right. So I, it, it's a little bit of a, of a differentiator. All right. Bringing out the work trends crystal ball. Where do you? see HR changing in the next five to 10 years? And do you have any bold predictions? Well, so I think I think we're going to be at an inflection point pretty quickly, particularly because of the rise of AI, where routine things more and more are being automated and successfully so. I think in 10 years, HR will either be out of business or there will be a hyper focus on human relations and human relationships with a very specific skill set in a very specific, very strategic spot at the top of the organization that's just going to be about because we're going to, we've got people who are going to be, you know, having to transition from one skill set to another. How are we going to do that? Well, that's going to, that's going to mean working together with academic providers, employers, and workers. We don't have that now. And we got to get it go and we got to get it going. And if HR can't make that happen, the CEO will find somebody else who can. But so we're either, HR is either going to be out of business, which I really don't think is going to be the case, but it could, or it's going to be transformed into really a human being, a people function, and all of the tactical, you know, process stuff that can be automated will be and will, will go somewhere else. So that what we now call HR will really be about the humans. So if you're out there listening to China and I today, we hope you're going to be with us in Vegas because the future uh, is wide open. And at the same time, it's calling upon you, each one of you out there to skill up and to skill up and take it seriously, because I, I concur with what China's saying. HR does run that risk of being out of business because we got the tools. And we need to either wisely adapt and become more scientific in how we analyze data, or I fear we will be left behind. So wise words, China Gorman, thank you for stopping by, and I will see you in Vegas. Yay! Thanks, Megan. Let's keep on talking. Join us for our Work Trends Twitter chat. We are going to be on Twitter with China Gorman on Wednesday, May 8th at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific, and most importantly, wherever you are around this great globe. Join us and talk about how work is changing around you. We want to hear from you. And if you'd like to get our Twitter chat questions in advance, sign up for our newsletter at talentculture.com.
Thanks to listening to Work Trends from Talent Culture. Join us every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern for a live Twitter chat with our podcast guest. To learn more about guests featured on today's show, visit the show notes for this episode at talentculture.com and help us spread the word. Subscribe to Work Trends wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave us a rating, review, and iTunes. Share Work Trends with your coworkers, your friends. Look forward to it. See you next time.